In this video, we're going to cover Sega Saturn emulation on the Mac version of RetroArch. The Sega Saturn may not have been the most popular console back in the 5th gen, but it is certainly one that has a number of cool games, a number of interesting ports, and has become one of my favorite consoles just because it's so curious. Now that being said, emulation for the Sega Saturn has become a lot easier over the last couple of years, and it runs really well on M1 and M2 based Macs. So in this video, we're going to be setting up Sega Saturn emulation in RetroArch using the Beatles Saturn Core. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now as we get started, this guide is a continuation of my Mac RetroArch setup guide. So if you haven't installed the Mac version of RetroArch yet, link in the description below will bring you to this playlist where you can follow along with the Mac setup guide, get RetroArch set up and configured, so that way you can continue along with this guide. Now after you get RetroArch installed and set up, just go ahead and load into it, and we're going to head into the online updater, core downloader, and then you can press the right arrow key on your keyboard to scroll down to Sega, and we are going to be downloading the Sega Saturn Beetle Saturn Core. So just press enter on this to get it downloaded. And with that in place, we're just going to go ahead and quit out of RetroArch again, so that way we can get our BIOS and game files set up. So the Sega Saturn is a CD-based system and requires the use of BIOS files to work properly. So I have a Sega Saturn BIOS file right here. And for anyone interested, I do have a guide on how to back up your own Sega Saturn BIOS files from a physical Sega Saturn. This does require the use of a PC, mind you, so do be aware of that before diving in. Otherwise, you can look to Google to try to find a Sega Saturn BIOS file, but illegal download links are not provided on this channel, so do not ask for them. Now, once you have your Sega Saturn BIOS files sourced, they need to be named according to the region that they're from. So if you're trying to play Japanese Saturn games, your BIOS file needs to be named Sega underscore 101.bin. And for US and European BIOS files, they need to be named MPR-17933.bin. And then there are two special BIOS files for King of Fighters 95 and Ultraman that need to be named according to what they are being shown right here. These are only used in these two specific games, so if you don't have these games, you don't have to source these BIOS files. So again, here is my US Sega Saturn BIOS file. It's named MPR-17933 as it's supposed to be. So let's just get this added to our RetroArch system folder. So open up a new finder window. Click on your documents hotkey here, open up the RetroArch folder, and inside you'll see the system folder. This is where all of our BIOS files go, so just going to drag my Saturn BIOS file right on in, and there we go. It is now ready to go. Now let's go ahead and talk about Sega Saturn games. So there are a number of formats that Sega Saturn games can be in. The most common is going to be bin Q. This is probably the preferable format to start with. If you have older Sega Saturn games, they might be in clone CD format. And then you can always convert them over to CHUD format to save on space. I've never really encountered the TOC extension personally. And then for this last extension here, M3U, that is used for multi-disc games as we will cover it momentarily. But if you happen to have a large physical collection of Sega Saturn games, you can actually use the PC version of RetroArch to make good game dumps of those. So. This will be linked in the description below for anyone interested. Otherwise, again, you can resort to Google, but no illegal download links are going to be provided on this channel once again. So for my Sega Saturn games, I dumped them using RetroArch a while back, and then I've converted them over to Chud in a number of different videos, so they're just already in Chud format and good to go here. Now, I do have one multi-disc game, and that is Command & Conquer, so Command & Conquer is one of those multi-disc games where it actually works pretty well to leave them individually, but... For demonstration purposes here, let's go ahead and make an M3U file to combine these into a single entry. So not too hard to get this set up. You can use the basic text edit program on Mac. And now before we get started, head up into the text edit settings here and make sure that you are saving your stuff as plain text. It's defaulted to rich text and that is not going to work. We need it as plain text. But now we can create a new document. And we're just going to add in our game file names to get them to work as an M3U file. So this process is pretty straightforward. You just grab the entire file name of the game in question. So I'm using chud format, so I'm just going to grab the entire file name plus the chud extension. If you are using bin Q file games, 
you want to grab the Q file plus the Q extension. And then you just paste them into the text document, single line per entry per disk. There we go. And once you have all the disks listed with their proper file extension, we're just gonna go ahead and save the file. So I already directed the file to save into my Command & Conquer folder here, so you can save it wherever you want to, it doesn't really matter. You're just gonna have to add it to your games folder at the end of the process. But anyway, just gonna name this. There we go. So I'm just gonna save that with a region code as well. And there it is. So close out of the text document. Now we just need to add the M3U extension to it. So just go ahead and rename this file and add .m3u to the end. And then when you get the pop-up being like, hey, do you want to change the extension? Say, yes, we want to use M3U. Thank you. And there we go. That is now a proper multi-disc configuration file that sees both of these games. Now, one last thing to note here for anyone interested, if you have your games just named like this, when you make a playlist, they won't be detected in the database properly. So you're going to want to add in region codes for your games if you want to have a chance of them automatically downloading thumbnails. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in the USA region extensions to all these real quick. And again, this is only necessary if you want to have RetroArch download thumbnails for them if you're going to use RetroArch as your front end. And there we go. So once you have your games and BIOS files in place, we're ready to go back into RetroArch and start playing. So heading on in here, there are two ways of loading up Sega Saturn content. The first one being to go to load content, navigate to your uh, Sega Saturn game. So again, I keep mine in an external volume named emulation. Sega Saturn games. And there we go. So. If your BIOS file's in the proper place and is a valid BIOS file, you should be greeted with the wonderful Sega Saturn boot up screen. I'm personally not a big fan of that method. It's a bit long-winded. So what I like to do instead is head over to import content. And for Sega Saturn games, we're gonna need to do a manual scan. So content directory, navigate to where your games are stored once again. Tell it to scan this directory. System name, press right on your D-pad to scroll down to Sega here and find Sega Saturn. Default core, choose your Sega Saturn core that you've previously downloaded. Now for file extensions, if you are using Q files, if your games are still in bin Q format, you're gonna wanna add in the Q extension here. Otherwise, you're gonna get duplicate entries for all of your bin and Q files. If you are not using bin Q, if you're using Chud, you can just go ahead and leave this one blank. But make sure scan recursively is set to on, so that way it checks inside subfolders. And then we can begin our scan for Sega Saturn content. And after the scan is completed, it should list all of your Sega Saturn content right here. And now one of the nicest things about the manual scan method, in a recent update, they have made it so if there is an M3U file present in a multi-disc game, it doesn't cause duplicate entries. So you can see here, I only have one entry for Command & Conquer instead of three, which is fantastic. But if your playlist entries are named according to the internal database, they should begin automatically downloading thumbnails as you scroll through them. Now, Command & Conquer is a bit of an odd duck. It requires a very specific name, and I knew it wasn't going to find a box art for me. So in this instance, it's actually pretty easy to get a box art added in manually. So what I like to do in these cases is search up the game in question, so Command & Conquer for Sega Saturn. There's a nice media section here with boxes, and inside are box arts for pretty much every region and version of the game. So you can just click on the one you need, right click, save image. I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And here it is right there. So I just need to get this one edited now. So I'm just gonna open it with preview and we're going to save a duplicate. And now in our duplicate, we're going to save it. We're gonna make sure it is in PNG format and then we just need to name it according to our RetroArch playlist. So we have Command & Conquer USA. So that is what I'm going to name my duplicate file here. So we're going to name that Command and Conquer USA. There we go. And then just gonna tell that to save and there it is right there on my desktop. 
So now we can just close out of both of these. We don't need them anymore. Now to get this added to our thumbnails folder. So make sure you don't have anything selected. Click on the go button here and then hold down this key to make the library entry appear here. You can see that it disappears if you're not holding it. So just click on library, application support, RetroArch, thumbnails, find the system that you are adding the box art for. So Sega Saturn, named box arts, and then drag our command and conquer file right there for this example. Now, when we go back into the playlist, hello, and well, I done goofed and forgot to give this the .png extension. So that's cool, I guess. All right, there we go. The Mac just really hated it with the extension code on it, I guess. That's fine, I suppose, but there it is. Got it working. But anyways, to begin playing a game from a Saturn playlist, all you need to do is select the game, tell it to run. All right, and there we go. Sega Saturn games up and running on our M1 and M2 Macs through playlists and just absolutely glorious. Now, before we continue on, let's go ahead and talk about control options for Sega Saturn games. So if you press F1 on a keyboard or a guide button on a controller, that'll bring you into the RetroArch quick menu. And from here, you can head down to controls, port one controls, and you can change your Sega Saturn's controller type. So the main ones are going to be control pad. That's gonna be compatible with every Saturn game. But then there's also the 3D control pad which is useful for games that can support it. So my example being Panzer Dragoon 2 here. So if we change over to the 3D control pad, go back into the game here, I can now play the game using my analog sticks on my controller, thus providing me with a lot better aiming control than just the D-pad. And again, there are a number of different controller types available, so you could just select them based on the game in question and set them as needed. Now, if you change the control type for a game, after you're done doing so, just go back out here, head up to manage remap files, and save it as a game remap file, so that way those controls only take effect for the game in question and don't affect every other Sega Saturn title, because again, not every Saturn game is compatible with the 3D controller, in my example here. Now let's talk about how to change discs in multi-disc games. So I've loaded up my Command & Conquer M3U file here. It defaults to disc one, which is the GDI disc. So to change discs, we're gonna need to do a little bit of prep work here. So press F1 or your guide button to go into the quick menu. Press backspace or B on a controller to back out to your main menu here. And we're gonna go up to settings, user interface, and we're gonna turn off pause content when menu is active. That way the game continues running in the background while we have a menu up. This is necessary for some systems to do disc swaps properly. It's supposed to work without it, but it's not always the case. So I just like to err on the side of caution. But with that option changed, we could go back into our quick menu here. Head to Overrides, and then save this as a game override so that way this setting only takes effect for the game in question. But anyway, to change discs, now we just need to head to Disc Control inside our Quick Menu. So we're just in the normal Game Quick Menu now still. But Disc Control, tell it to eject the disc, and you'll see that it brings you to your Sega Saturn dashboard. Now for the current disk index, you can change to whichever disk you desire and then tell it to insert the disk. And you'll see that it'll say start application. So we can just load it right up. And now we are on disk two, Brotherhood of Nod. There we go. And with that, you now have all the basics required to play your Sega Saturn games on your M1 and M2 based Macs. But this being emulation, there are a number of extra options we can mess with, so let's go ahead and cover those now. So pressing F1 on our keyboard, we can head down into our quick menu once again, 
and this time head to core options. So our first selection is video, so we can apply horizontal overscan masks, so this will crop out garbage data if desired. Next we have initial scan line and last scan line. I really don't recommend messing with these unless you know exactly what you're doing. But finally we have enable horizontal blend, so this is a blurring filter that will give your Saturn games a softer appearance, so personal preference on if you want to use that one or not. It does a good job of softening up the pixels, but a lot of people don't like soft pixels. So, hey, here we go. We can leave them sharp if desired. And all my poor guys are dying. How dare they? Consolidate my forces. Anyway, next up we have our input options here. So you can enable six player multi-taps on port one or two. Allow opposing directions at the same time. And then we have analog stick dead zone percentages for our 3D controller games. So I like to set this one to zero. And then same thing with trigger dead zones. I usually tend to set those to zero as well. Next, you can set your mouse sensitivity for Sega Saturn mouse games. So if you have a Sega Saturn game that supports a mouse, it will literally use your physical mouse attached to your Mac and you can use it in game. It's pretty cool. And then finally, we have a gun crosshair. So you can choose between a different cross or a dot or turn it off entirely. And then you could choose the input mode between a touchscreen or your mouse. Light gun would be your mouse, touchscreen is a touchscreen. Next up, cartridge and memory card options. So, cartridge, this is set to auto detect by default, but there are a number of different options available. You can have nothing inserted, you could have a backup memory card inserted, so you could have more save capacity. You have your one megabyte and four megabyte expansion RAMs, which are needed for some games. And then finally, that King of Fighters and Ultraman expansion card needed for those two specific games and you needed those specific BIOS files for. But anyway, I typically just leave this one on auto detect or backup memory. I don't have any games that use the RAM cards personally, so backup memory works really well for me, but auto detect should work great for most use cases. Next up, shared internal memory. The Sega Saturn had a very limited internal save capacity space. So if you don't want to run out of space, I recommend leaving this one off. But if you wanna have a more authentic original Saturn experience or you have a game that shares saves between it and another title, you could turn this one on. And our last option in this menu is to share the backup memory. So this one I typically do tend to turn on because I could save things into the backup memory. That way I could share them between different games without having to share the internal memory. So this is an option that works for me, so that's what I typically tend to go with. Next up, system region. There's a lot of regions to choose from. Automatic should work for most use cases, but if for whatever reason your games are being misidentified, you can manually set it here. BIOS language, you can set your language here. Next up, CD image cache. This will load the entire game disk image into RAM before starting up. Gives you more reliable performance at the cost of longer startup times. So personal preference on if you wanna use that one or not, most modern storage devices should be more than fast enough to run the games. Next up, mid-frame input synchronization. So this will help lower input latency. It should be able to be run fine on M1 and M2 base max, but if you experience lag with the option on when you didn't have it before, just go ahead and turn it back off. And our last option is to automatically set real-time clock on game load. Leave this one on, otherwise you have to manually set the clock every time you load up a game, and it is a friggin' hassle. But that does it for all of our game options. So as always, if there's options you wanna save for some games but not others, you can head into Manage Core Options and save them as a game options file. So that way, those specific options only apply to the one game and not every game. Now the last option I wanna cover before we call this video is the use of shaders. So Sega Saturn is able to use shaders very well. So you could turn shaders on in here and then begin loading up any shader presets as you see fit. So one of my favorites is to use CRT easy mode because it just gives you a really good scan line filter and gives you decent blurring without being too aggressive. And it just looks really great overall. Now, as always, shaders are a very personal preference thing. So there's no such thing as the perfect shader. So just go through and choose whichever one looks best to you. Like it just, there's a lot of options. Just go through and See which ones you like, like you can apply different types of scaling effects and all kinds of stuff. So lots to choose from. But once you find a shader that you like, just head back into the shader menu, 
click on the save button, and then you can save them as a core preset or a game preset, so that way every time you load up a game, that is the shader that will greet you. So I'm just gonna do that with the core preset here. And that's gonna do it as far as Sega Saturn emulation is concerned within the Beetle Saturn core on RetroArch. Beetle Saturn works really well on most devices these days and gives you such a good, accurate Saturn experience. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your Saturn emulation projects up and running to your desires. But here at the end, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to help keep this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. Can never thank you all enough. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.